Hello and welcome to a new video about hydraulics. This time we are going to talk about dimensioning of the of a pressure accumulator storage. Yeah. However, there was a video about this and I told you there are several reasons why we might build in such an accumulator. Yeah. And if there are several reasons, there are several ways of how to dimension in this. It. Yeah. So, let's have a look to possible reasons, let's call it. Yeah. So, one possible reason to build in a, a pressure accumulator is to reduce pressure peaks. Okay. So, we might have pressure peaks. This means if there is, you know, there is oil, liquid running through the system and suddenly a huge valve is closing or something like this, suddenly this part of the, of the uh, oil is blocked. Yeah? There is mass accelerated, there is mass and this mass needs to be slowed down. Yeah? And if I suddenly block this stream, yeah, we will have a pressure peak. Because this mass is simply bringing its dynamic behavior with it. So it's breaking down. This water hammer, it's called in a hydropower plant, it's also there. There is some vertical turbine, and if I close the turbine, I have a pressure rise in the, in the so called penstock. Here it's pretty much the same. If I close a valve, I have a pressure rise in the, in the pipe. Yeah? Sometimes you can even hear it at home. If you open, if you open the water, let the water run and then poof, suddenly close it, you hear ding, ding. Yeah? This is the pressure peak and we want to reduce this. Yeah? So there we have to think about the uh, kinetic energy maximum kinetic energy which might be there depends on how many kilos of liquid are running there or are flowing yeah? so we have a kinetic energy and of course the maximum allowed pressure These two things I need, and then I can dimension my my pressure uh, accumulator. Because if you have an accumulator, the pressure rises; it's damping somehow. These pressure peaks. Then there would be the the possibility of thermal expansions. If the liquid is getting warm, the volume of the liquid is getting more. Yeah? And since it's hardly compressible, yeah? this additional volume has to go somewhere. Yeah? In every heating system, or in a lot of heating systems, let's call it like this, there is somewhere, if you are warming up water, yeah? then you need somewhere such thermal expansion storage. Yeah. The additional, the excessive volume, because of the additional temperature, yeah, needs to go somewhere. Yeah. So here we have a maximum expansion, depending on how many liters are in there and what type of liquid this is, yeah, we have a maximum expansion and of course the maximum allowed pressure. These are the th 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 things. Yeah? Then there might be shock absorbers. Okay? Shock absorbers. If you have a vehicle or something like this, there are the pushing rods and, and there is shocks coming from the tires or 
or belt drives or whatever, yeah, and these shocks are pushing in the oil. Yeah, if there is a if there is a liquid filled damper system, yeah, the shock absorbers, then it's damped by by this this um, accumulator. Okay, so here we have the maximum length the the rod will go in yeah? maximum maximum length of push maximum push length yeah? according to size of the of the shock absorber this gives the volume yeah? and also the maximum allowed pressure of course Would also be a reason. Then we do have the reason of, of energy recovery. You know, if you have lifted something with a hydraulic system yeah, and then you are lowering this weight or whatever this is, or maybe you want just to lower weight, yeah, then the weight is pushing in the rod of the cylinder and this pressure here or this liquid can go does not need to go directly into the tank if there is pressure enough i can push it into a accumulator and later if i want to move up again i can use this pressure reuse the pressure energy recovery pressure energy storage yeah. So here we're talking about the maximum oil volume which might get pushed into the into the accumulator. Yeah. And of course again the maximum load pressure. So we have the maximum oil volume and the maximum allowed pressure mm -hmm. then we talked about pumps yeah? there are pumps which do have a continuous stream yeah? there are pumps which have pulsation yeah? and if we have pulsation we might want to damp them yeah? so there is also pulsation damping pulsation damping. Here we have a pump. Huh? We have some elements which use the oil. So we have an average oil consumption of the, of the device. We have a maximum, a peak flow out of the pump. Yeah. Peak flow of pump, yeah. and we have a permittable ripple of the pressure, yeah. a permittable pressure change, yeah. allowed pressure change. Because the delta volume of these two, they have to be consumed by the accumulator. Okay. Pulsation damping. And last but not least, there might also be energy storage. Okay. So we do have some elements which do use an average amount of, of energy, of oil. Yeah. And we do have maybe sometimes, very short periods, a peak oil flow yeah, where we need a lot of oil. Yeah. And then we have um, a pump, yeah, energy power, power station, which will not exactly deliver the peak oil flow, yeah, but less. However, more than the average, yeah, 
big and the delta of this can be then stored in a pressure accumulator and in times of high needs I can empty the pressure accumulator okay so what we need to here to dimension this yeah, we need the, we need the average and the maximum oil consumption Maximum leverage oil, oil consumption. Uh, we need the pump pump flow, uh, average pump flow, uh, and we need the share of energy to be stored. Uh, here, if I relatively often have the maximum oil flow, I need more share of the average oil flow to be stored. Yeah? If this is only on rare occasions, I can share quite small amount. Okay? Energy storage. So, actually, this is how we can dimension things. Yeah? And now, now let's think about what we do have here. Yeah? So we do have usually a minimum allowed operating pressure because usually I want to, there is simply a minimum limit. Yeah? To be able to lift something, yeah? this is the minimum allowed operating pressure. And we have a maximum allowed operating pressure as well. Yeah? So these are the two pressure values we have. Yeah? So we have a P1. Minimum pressure. Of course, it does not really matter if it's the gas pressure or the oil pressure because they are the same. Huh? And there's a P2 maximum pressure. Huh? Usually, we have a pre-filling pressure in our in our energy storage facilities yeah? in our energy store in our pressure accumulator so there we said there is the bladder type there is the membrane type there is the piston type and so on and we have to pre-fill this already with some pressurized gas yeah sometimes nitrogen sometimes air yeah and this pre-filling pressure is p0 okay Pre-filling pressure. Okay. This is the first thing we have to select: this pre-filling pressure. Yeah. And we say, uh, if we have, if we want to to do to have some energy storage or some safe reserve, something like this. Yeah. Yeah. So energy energy storage. reserve then my pre-filling pressure shall be around 0 0.90% 90% of the minimum operating pressure okay if we do have if you do want shock absorbers or pressure peaks or something if you want to damp some pulsation yeah damping then we have around 0 0.6 of P1, yeah. 60%. This is a good starting point, let's call it like this. Yeah. And the limits are 0 0.2 multiplied by the maximum pressure yeah, shall be smaller than the pre-filling pressure and the, the minimum allowed pre-filling pressure or the maximum allowed pre-filling pressure is of course the minimal allowed pressure. And I cannot go higher. Huh? These are the limits. Huh? So these are, are the volumes. Huh? The pre-filling pressure, when is this in the system if there is no oil left in the accumulator? OK? 
Okay. If there is no oil left in the accumulator, I do have the maximum uh, or a total gas volume, V0. Uh, total gas volume. This is the maximum. This is what you see in the data sheets. Uh, this is a gas volume. Then there is, of course, the volume, gas volume, at the pressure P1, the minimum operating pressure, and as we do, the gas value at P2, at the maximum operating pressure. This is, this is smaller than this, and this is even smaller than this. Clear. And in between, yeah, I have the, the uh, usable volume. So delta V yeah, the u equals V1 min minus V2. This is the usable volume. Okay. This is what I need to have. Yeah? I have a minimum pressure, I have a maximum pressure, and I have the usable volume. Yeah? Usually. Yeah? So, maximum loud pressure, usable volume, maximum expansion, maximum... Pa, 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 pa. It's always the same. Okay? Uh, then, usually I also have to take into account that I do have temperatures changes. Yeah? So there is a minimum operating temperature and there is a maximum operating temperature. Yeah? As soon as there is gas involved, I also have this polytropic uh, expansion, you know, gas pressure multiplied by volume raised by this polytropic exponent is constant. Yeah? And this polytropic exponent We also have to take into account, yeah? and this n we can select 1.6 at around 45 degrees Celsius. Uh, also a good guess. Yeah? Now, what I need to select actually is this V0, okay? This this total gas volume, yeah? because minimum and maximum pressure I've given. Prefilling pressure I can select here in this area, yeah due to my field of application, yeah, I have the usable volume yeah, and what I need is the, is the total gas volume. That's it. Yeah. Because this is then giving me the size of the pressure accumulator. So, if we use this minimum maximum operating temperatures and we simply say we use the maximum operating temperature for all our estimates yeah? because then I have the highest pressures inside yeah? and I'm using the absolute pressure, absolute pressures, not, not relative pressures, absolute pressures, this means plus the ambient pressure, usually 1013 millibar, yeah? around one bar, let's make plus one bar. If we have 80 bar extensive pressure, it's 81 bar I have to select. Okay. So, the volume change uh, equals V0, P0, Actually, what is inside here is that, that the volume change is P0 to P1 yeah, multiplied by V0 yeah, because in this case it's isotherm. Yeah. 
we, even in the minimal pressure we have the same we have the same temperature than the pre-filling pressure. There is nothing changed. There is time. If you have pulsation and so on, then we do have warm energy and so on. And then we really this is why between P1 and P2 I need to use this N. How can I calculate now this V0? Delta V P1 divided by P0 uh, divided by 1 minus P1 P2 That's it. That's it. And there is always this formula in the background. Yeah? So it's P1 multiplied V1 is P2 multiplied V2 and N equals 1 is a term. Okay. This is why this P1 to P0 is. And if I have this N, 1.6, yeah, polytropic exponent 1.6 between P1 and P2. This is why it looks that way. Yeah, this is how you dimension pressure accumulator. Select the field of application, select minimum and maximum pressure, select the pre-filling pressure based on this, uh, and then select the usable volume. Uh, and out of the usable volume and the minimum and maximum pressure and pre-filling pressure, you can calculate the size of the, of the accumulator. I mean, that's it. It's not that hard. Now we have dimensioned pretty much everything in our system. We have dimensioned the working element, the cylinder, we have dimensioned the tank, we have dimensioned the pump, we have dimensioned the pressure uh, accumulator if necessary. Yeah. I mean, that's it. Yeah. Now we have a pressure system, we have a hydraulic system. That's it about hydraulics, dimensioning of hydraulics. Yeah? Next time we're going to talk about proportional technique. Yeah? Up to now we only talked about valves with which we're switching, one position or the other position. Now we're talking about proportional valve. What this is and what type of proportional valves and how they operate will then be covered in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.